A few days ago, I showed you how you could use an elemental form and feed those fields through to a custom post type and custom fields. But I want to add a little bit more to that and show how it could be super useful if you were going to use it to collect guest posts or even if you wanted to submit posts to your website or another blog and how you want to utilize this with a single post template. Let me clarify, we have a form on the page. This is just an elemental form. I'm going to go and complete some of these fields. I've added in some random text and we do have a drop down over here where we could select the writer or the author. I'm going to leave it as me. Now, these are not taxonomy fields, but you could add these into the form as a checkbox or a radio button or something like that. We are also going to select some images. It's just like what you would do if you were filling in any form where you're going to go and upload. It's that simple and easy and you could add as many fields as you want. This is just an elemental form and I am going to show you what you need to do to make sure it works. I'm now going to go and hit send and it should say that this submission was successful. And if I go over to my custom post type that's called articles and I will show you how I did this, you will now see that this is so super cool is now present there. If I go and hit view, it's going to bring up the single post template title you got the intro date, social sharing icons, or whatever you want. Then you got the body. And you will have noticed that I had those two fields. So cover image went there. And then the mid body image went here. Now I have got some further text below. That's because I've just gone and duplicated body one and body two over here. I'm going to explain. So if you wanted to kind of have like some clear instructions where you say to whoever's completing this, we're going to have some text, then we'll have an image, then we'll have some further text. You could do that. Now, let me cover over how I built this. We're using the advanced custom fields plugin. Of course, why wouldn't you ACF? And we have gone and created a post type called articles. If I go and edit it, that's literally all it is. It's just called articles and the singular label articles and the post type key articles. Not picking any taxonomy, but what I did do is say I don't need to have any of these fields except custom fields because I'm going to feed through everything from the elemental form. So that was your very basic custom post type called articles. And then I went and created the custom field. So article CF and inside of here, I went and added in my title, my intro, my body, my cover image, my midpoint image, which is just called image one and then articles writer. This is basically just a text field as a lot of them are. And when you do get onto say the intro, uh, they are the WYSIWYG editor. Now, I will mention that there is a compromise here in terms of what you do on the form and what you can do when it comes to editing. If you want to leave the intro and the body as a text editor, or sorry, not text editor, text area, you could do, but I've left it as WYSIWYG so that you could do some further modification later on. Like I said, I'll explain that in a moment. Make sure you pop in the right field types over here. So text, WYSIWYG, image, image, and we have select for the articles writer where we've got our choices down there. So make sure you do all of that. What is really, 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 really super important though is the label and the name. So over here, I've given all of them articles underscore writer. Um, and that's the same for the field name and the label over here where we have the intro articles underscore intro. Okay, because the custom post type is articles, I went and put a prefix of articles underscore the reason I'm saying that is because when we get onto the code snippet, it makes it so much easier to fill in and complete. And also the names I've given them here, such as a uh, cover and image underscore one is what I'm going to be using on the elemental form as well, just for consistency and to make it easier for yourself when you come to manage. So let's now go to the elemental form. And like I said, this is just a form. Look, title, I've got writer. The writer field is a select field and I went and added in my options. Okay, so just like copy and paste what you had before. The cover image is just a file upload. Go and pop in what is your allowed file types. And then we have the mid page image, right? You could have this as many times as you want because maybe you want your authors or when you're filling this in, you want to have a certain format. So you're always going to have like your text, your image and your text. Now you're probably saying, why don't you go and use WYSIWYG? The trouble is though, if I go to body, you don't actually have that option. And I'm going to drop some links in the video description where some people have gone away and looked into it. And I use ChatGPT and other AI tools. And I did come up with a solution which utilized what other people have said, but also made it a little bit better, adding in the WYSIWYG and all of that into the form. So the option is there. The trouble I had though, was getting my code snippet, even after further refinement to feed into the custom post type, just would not process properly. It just kept falling over. So in the end, after literally a day's worth of me going back and forth, I just said, I'm just going to leave it. 
And that's the compromise. But like I said, there is a slight thing you can do to help yourself out later on. So please stay with me on this, okay? So you go and add in your elemental forms. Now, like I said before, when we were looking at the custom fields, where I said that the name and label has to have articles underscore, and then I had these names, title, intro, body, cover, image one, and writer. When you actually come to the elemental form, I did not put the word articles in. I just gave them the bit after articles underscore. So title is title, writer is writer, cover image is cover, and this is all done in the advanced tab. Mid page image, when you go to advanced tab, is image underscore one. So on the custom field, it's articles underscore image underscore one. Over here, it's just image underscore one. I hope that makes sense. And then, you know, the intro in the body, same thing again. You just have the word. Just stick your word in there. So if I was to go and do that, you can see that the ID is now changing. Let's get that back to body. As far as the form goes, that's it. Okay, you don't have to do anything fancy. I mean, I've got collect submission. We could get rid of that. You can have it email it to yourself if you want. If I just scroll all the way up over here, the form name is articles underscore form. Okay, again, I'm using the custom post type articles. So articles underscore form. And if we go to additional options, you must make sure you put articles underscore form here as well. So if your custom post type was called dog, you would have the word dog underscore, all right? Just get into the habit of doing that and it makes everything I'm showing you so much easier to understand. Please drop in the comments if so far it has not made sense. And if it has made sense, please put in the comments, this made total sense, okay? Maybe don't use those as like exact words because then it might feel like everyone is spamming or bots. Change the words, use whatever words you want, okay? So you go into your fields, you change the ID, you make sure you give it a form ID of articles underscore form or whatever it is and make sure you do it in the form field, uh, the form name as well. Then go and install the code snippets plugin and we're going to drop in a code snippet. The link is in the video description. Here's the code and I'm going to zoom into it so you can see it a bit better. Everything you need to do is right at the top. The way this code has been built, the way I've pulled it together, I, want, I don't want you scrolling up and down trying to find out where do I need to add things, things in. Everything is done at the top. However, I will mention though that down here it says post status is published, right? So as soon as someone hits send, that will go to your custom post type or your fields and all of that and it will be set as published, which means it's now visible on your website. Maybe you've got a loop carousel, a loop grid or something else like that or even just blog post archive. If you don't want it to publish instantly because you want to review it or make further modifications later on down the line, like maybe adding in further images or making changes, go and change the word publish to draft, okay? If you do that, it will now become a draft. It's not published, but it will be visible inside of your article's custom post type. And again, I'm gonna show you the flow of all of this in a moment. Let's scroll back to the top. The logic, right? The post type is called articles, right? Can you see why I made sure that the plural, the singular, and the name, the labels, all of that flow in a certain way? The form on elemental form, remember, articles underscore form. It makes it easier for you. Over here, I have a field called title. So that is the field on the elemental form. The ID was title. I want that to go to articles underscore title, the custom field. You can see intro, dirt, cover, dirt, image one, body, writer. Okay, I can't make it make any more sense than that. If you had an image like underscore two, or you had like a second image or whatever you want to call it on the elemental form, and you call it image underscore two, you will then have a field in the custom field called articles underscore image underscore two. And you, that's all you need to do. You don't need to change anything because this is going to pick up your title and it makes it the post title, which is why I didn't want to use like some of these standard WordPress -y fields that you get in the custom post type. Remember, we unchecked everything except custom fields. Please go back and watch that in the video if you are unsure. And that's it. You just save changes and activate. Of course, make a backup before you use any code snippet or code given to you by anyone you trust or love or adore, or even if you don't know them, please always make a backup or test it on a staging site. We're not responsible if you run it and something goes wrong, but I've run this to death and it works brilliantly. So when you complete this form and you then go and submit it, and by the way, I've gone and set these up to be like 33%. You can't actually see what it says there. You know, if you want to change the order, you know, look, I don't want to go through elemental forms here, but go and change your width if you want, all right, and have it on a separate row. It's up to you, but you could pop a field in after the body and then have another body field. So this should all make total sense. 
So when you complete this and hit send, it goes over here and it's already set to publish. Look, quick edit, it's set to publish. If you want to have it as draft, like I said, go and pop the words in for draft. But that's where it'll go. If I go and hit view, you will see the single post template that I'm going to very, very quickly cover off. But if you go and hit edit, I can go and change the title. I can go and change the intro, the body. There you've got your images. And down here, you can go and change the writers as well because it was a select field, I think, in the custom field. Now, remember, when we did the elemental form, it was a text area. So you were missing the facility of putting things in bold, adding in images, inserting videos and stuff like that. But when you get to the custom post type articles, because the custom field was a WYSIWYG, you now get all of those features back again. So if you now want to go and drop in an image or media or anything like that, you can do. It will now add it in for you. So there's a bit of a compromise. If someone wants to take the code and hack into it and they can make it work, please let me know. I'd love to do another video or, or iteration of this, okay? But I did the best I could and I just could not get it to process correctly from the form to the custom field. But you may be able to crack it. And I love it when people crack it with a bit of code, okay? And they're able to improve it. Don't just criticize. Don't just say, oh, but that does not do that. Improve it. Take this as a starter and make it better. Now let's have a quick look at the single post template. This is basically it. Look, we have an image over here. I just dropped in an image field. And let me just remind you, if you forget, you drop in an image field. This is just a page. I think it's a box width of 900. You drop it in, you hit the dynamic tag, scroll down to ACF image field, hit the spanner or the wrench. And then from the key, I'm going to pick articles cover. If I change that to pick articles image one, it would have brought over the midpoint image. And then you just build out how you want. So we've got the title over there, post title. Uh, that's just a meta field or post info. This is the ACF field for articles intro. So again, you know, you drop in a heading field or a text field, you hit the dynamic tag. You pick ACF custom field, you hit the spanner wrench and look, there's my choices. And I went and said, we're not going to have body. We're not going to have writer. We're going to have intro. Now I have not shown the writer on here anyway. I could have done. So I could have maybe done a duplicate like that. Gone and click the spanner or wrench. And then I'm going to pick articles writer. And you should see my name pop up like that. Uh, if you want to go to the advanced tab, we could go to before and type in author colon space. And you'll now see the word author appear like that. If you think it's too close together, change your margins, your column gaps, row gaps, all of that. Uh, social sharing, share buttons. And then down here, I went and selected the article's body. And then down here, I added in another image. And then down here, I duplicated the article's body. I could have had body one, body two. But if you were prepared to go back into the WYSIWYG and go and drop in your images and your article text there, you wouldn't have to duplicate like I do. But this now is complete. I mean, you, you do the elemental form, you hit send and boom, it's visible in your carousel, your grids or wherever you got your loops and uh, etc. But this will work for you in a much more fluid way than using, I should have mentioned this right at the top. You don't have to use a third party plugin to do this. But this is very, very basic. And if you want to do something a whole lot more fancy where you can do the WYSIWYG on the front end form, and have access to other fields and be able to edit as well, because you got to remember that you could stick this on a page. You could password protect the page. You might say you got to be logged in to complete this. There might be display conditions, right? So you could say that this particular form, if we go to the advanced tab and go down here to where we have display conditions, I might say add a condition uh, and we might say that the author is a certain person. Or we might say that the role of the person has to be an author or maybe a customer because it might be like a review form or a feedback form. Um, so th th there's various ways that you could set this up for you. And then after they've completed, it's going to feed through to your custom post type. You can go back in and edit it if you want or set it to draft. But it just makes things so much more efficient without using third party plugins. And like I said, there's nothing wrong with third party plugins. I'm not naming any here because they are all really, really good. If you want to do more, but if you want just a really basic way of feeding through, and I did this with a custom post type, you could have done this just with the standard WordPress post as well, where you don't have to have a custom post type and you're not going to have custom fields or anything like that. All you've got to do is make sure that the ID for your forms relate to the ID of uh, wherever they're going to feed into, which is why I feel like the custom post type does actually work better for you.
even when it is a standard WordPress post, because you have so much more control over what you're doing and you are limited as to what you get with the standard WordPress post anyway, you know, with the fields. Here you can be so much more versatile. I didn't feed through a taxonomy field because again, I had a bit of an issue with the custom post type taxonomy and getting it to work. I mean, it worked. The, the I, I could have done that here and the item showed, but again, when it came to the processing, there was always a bit of a glitch. And when I notice things where it doesn't seem to work like it's synchro, syn synchronized, synchronoscally, it doesn't sync properly. That bothers me. And I will look into it and then I kind of have to go, right, I'm done to death on this. I have to, I've got other stuff to work on, people. I've got other stuff. So I've got to move on. But this is a start for 10. And I feel like this does open the door in so many possible potential ways where you could uh, use this to collect reviews, testimonials. Maybe you have got someone you work with and you want them to fill in like forms or articles or posts but you don't want them to always have access to log in for whatever reason. And you just want to give, send them this URL page, right? And they just go to the page and they just do their article. And maybe like, you know, it's like password protected. So there's a chance someone else might land on the page, but you've password protected it. And I know you're going to say, but well, you could crack the password and all of that. But if you're going to crack a password, you're probably going to do a whole lot more than just submit a form, right? Maybe. I don't know. I'm in run from Web Squadron. I hope you've taken something away from this and you could now utilize this in your own website. And if you do, please stick in the comments how you've used it or how you've made it better. Or have I overlooked something? Let me know, all right? Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and follow. I'll see you soon. Take care, bye. Never break, always fight, never quit. Do it right, play the game, win your life. Have no shame, there's no time for the pain.